Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. The Captain Captain Talk Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. Movies, TV, Sports, Flicks. The Captain Captain Talk Flicks. Welcome to the Captain Talks Flicks Podcast. I'm your host, the Captain Cortez, a.k.a. Mr. Love, and this is where we talk flicks. I welcome the podcast, podcast where me, the Captain, talks about movies, TV, sports, flicks, anything you see on the tube or screen. I'd like to get in here and give my unique perspective, because after 46 years of being on planet Earth, I've developed a unique perspective about these movies, TV, sports, and flicks. I can't tell about it. Because just maybe, just maybe you care. And according to the stats, looks like you do care. I want to give a big shout out to Romania. We got some plays over there this past week. Gracias, gratitude, toda barra. In Romania, I heard about that Peles Castle over there. I saw some pictures on the internet. Oh, wow, it looks so dope. I would love just to go up in that castle and check it out. It's just, as I know it's an older building the architecture is so beautiful. Oh, it's so awesome. So one of these days when I'm in Romania, you don't mind to fly down, check that castle out. Relax, chill. Just peep it out. Check it out. So anyways, thanks for listening. Gracias. Gratitude. And just said FYI, back in the day with School to Be Radio DJ. But I never got a job. I think I never got a job. Because I've never been in a castle. If I would have just been in a castle, that might have inspired me. And motivated me to become a world famous radio DJ. But I never did. And my feelings are hurt. And I feel like a failure. But that allowed me to become the greatest podcaster in the Matrix. So up to the bait. Might be true. Might not be true. But I said it on the internet. So it's got to be true, right? Because everything on the internet is facts. Not facts, truth, not truth, fake news, propaganda. I don't even know. I can't keep track. I can't keep up. It's so crazy and complicated. So when you're on the internet, just be mindful. Just be aware. Anyways, I could ramble here all day, but it won't. Let's get right into the podcast. But first, a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's a big place. And on this world, there's a lot of different people. Different roles, different different positions. One of those positions is dictator. You might have heard of a few. You might know one. You might live somewhere where a dictator's at. Well, guess what, bro? You can have two opinions of a dictator. You can think they're cool, or you can think they suck. Now, if you think they suck, we got a little something for you for the existing fictions as a store. We got a t-shirt that says, Dictators Suck. And let's be real, they kind of do suck. I'll be honest. I'm kind of leaning towards the sucky side. You know, maybe maybe it's not true. Maybe they don't suck. But everything I know about them seems to be they suck. And maybe that's not correct. I don't know. Maybe I have to, I have to think about it a little bit more. But right now, in 2022, let's just say dictators kind of suck. So if you feel that and you want to express that on a t-shirt, we got a shirt over the existing fictions as a story that says dictators suck. So I'll put the link below, check it out. Now let's get on with the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, here I am again. And I'll be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I only got four hours of sleep. My stomach's a little queasy. I don't even drink. I don't got a hangover. I wasn't partying. I'm not sure why I couldn't sleep. Maybe I was just too excited to do the podcast. Maybe the snow made me stay up. Maybe I was I couldn't sleep because I was just so amped up from all the caffeine during the day. Maybe I'm worn out. Maybe the language lessons are just messing with my brain. Maybe it's the Matrix. <laughs> Could be a glitch in the Matrix. I don't know. Maybe maybe the the simulation we're living in is unraveling, disturbing my split sleep. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know enough about those things. I don't even know what's going on with it. It doesn't matter. I'll try to sleep again tonight and see what happens. Maybe I'll sleep. Maybe I won't. Who knows? 
Only the universe knows. Only the G-O-D knows. That's it. They only know. I'll find out when I go to bed tonight. But in the meantime, it's time to do podcasts. And despite only having four hours of sleep, a little queasy stomach, I still did the workout training. A little bit elliptical. A little bit of bag work throwing them hands. Bobbing and weaving. Throwing hands. Yeah, I did it. Tired? So what? A little, little, little queasy stomach? So what? We work. This is how we roll. Jobs got to get done. Podcasts got to get done. We do the work. So that's what's going down. Work is getting done. And this week, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to talk about Star Trek Picard, the episode Watcher. Before I get into that, I'm letting you know right now, there will be spoilers. There will be spoilers. So... Stop what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the plot that you're used to. So if you don't want to spoil, stop now come back later. If you don't care, then let us proceed. Anyways, this week, Star Trek Picard, watch her. We joined the crew, we joined the team. Still trying to find out where is the error in the timeline? Where is the disturbance in the timeline? Where is it at? So we can resolve it. They're still looking for it. But the thing is... It's the problems. You know, Rios, you know, he got detained last week by ICE. Out of all the people that could detain, he got detained by ICE. Yeah, no papers. You know, that's how it goes. It's unfortunate. It's bullcrap. Where he comes from, you don't need all that. But that's where he's at. So he's detained by ICE, which is unfortunate. So he's over there. He can't do nothing. He's stuck. So Seven and Raph here are looking for him. They're riding the bus. They're on this bus, there is a guy who looks like a punk with a boombox playing loud music. As soon as I saw that, I said, bro, is this Star Trek The Voyage Home? <laughs> this must be Star Trek For The Voyage Home. Because in Star Trek For The Voyage Home, Spock, Kirk, ride a bus. There's a guy, punk guy, with, with a boombox playing loud music. You know what I found out? That guy in the bus is the same guy that was in the bus in The Voyage Home. Same dude. Same guy. Now, what I'm really curious about, is he the exact same character? (laughs) I was able to confirm that, but it's the same actor. It would be really interesting if it's the same character. Same guy, still dresses like a punk, still plays his boombox on the bus. Is it the same guy? It's the same character. I need to look a little further to find that out. I know it's the same actor. And as soon as I seen that scene, I knew, I was like, oh, I know, I know. They're they're tipping the hat to to, uh, Voyage Home. The Voyage Home, I believe, is the first Star Trek movie I've seen. Or maybe one of the first. And believe it or not, my school played The Voyage Home in school. They got the TV with the cart. You know, the TV with the cart. You ever seen those TV with carts? If you live in America and you're old like me, they had like a TV on this cart that rolls out. The VCR in it. And then they put the VCR tape in it. We got to watch The Voyage Home in class. I remember what grade it was in. It was in some grade. Some school. But they had the TV cart and the VCR. I think it was middle school, maybe. Who knows? I don't even know. But they played Star Trek The Voyage Home in my class. Now, I always say schools kind of suck sometimes on here. But that moment in time, it was all right. Because what schools are playing Star Trek in the classroom? Probably not a lot these days. I don't even know if they play movies in the class no more or not. But chances are they're probably not playing Star Trek. So now I got to see Star Trek in the school, in the classroom. And in the classroom watching Star Trek The Voyage Home, I remember seeing that scene that stuck in my mind and I'm watching this right here. Picard, and there he is again. Same guy, playing the loud music. <laughs> it's great. So great. It was, like, it was great, man. So awesome. So anyways, Rafi, Seven, they ride the bus. They see that guy, that cool guy. So they ride the bus. They see that cool guy. And they're, they're going all over the place. They're going to police stations. They go to the police station, try to get answers. Like, where is Christopher Rios? Where is Big Punisher at? All my hip-hop heads know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but where's Christopher Rios? So they couldn't find him. So they leave there. And they say, hey, bro, we need to get access to this police car computer in here. Let's get in here. So they get up in there and they, 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 they get in the police car. They're like, what are you doing getting in the police car? They get in there anyway. They don't care. They don't care. They get, <laughs> don't do that, by the way. They get in there, shut the computer. Oh, yeah, we know where, we know, we know where Christopher Rios is at now. We can find him now. But it's somehow, somebody, they end up driving the police car. They end up just taking the cop car. Seven is taking the cop car, driving the cop car. 
with Rafi in the passenger seat. And this sequence with Seven driving the cop car is absolutely awesome. It's just so interesting to see Seven of Nine in the past driving a cop car. I think they're in L.A., around L.A., not knowing how to really drive. <laughs> it's crazy, so crazy. I got a big kick out of that. It's so cool to see Seven Nine driving around, not knowing how to drive. So she's like, 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 yeah, you can drive Starship. You can't drive this car. It's like, it's an antique. Hey, Seven, I drive those antiques right now. I'm pretty good at it, actually. I'll be judgmental. But that's what, the, and be honest, that's what the best scenes in Star Trek in a long time. Just seeing them driving the car. The time travel episodes when they go back in time are always usually pretty good. But as you guys probably know by now, I'm a big fan of time travel, so that's part of it. But it was very awesome. So anyways, they try to find Chris. They go all over the place. They finally find him. They go on a bus, you know what I mean? They're doing all this. In the meantime, though, the car's on the ship with um, Agnes. And they're like, figured they found some coordinates. And Picard's like, hey, let me go to, the, let me go to these coordinates to see what's going on here. The Watcher may be there. So he decides to go. He's like, I'll go there. And he is beamed to a street. The name of that street is Forward. Like Forward, F-O-R-W-A-R-D. Forward Avenue, if I remember correctly. The building he's got to go into, the building 10 on Forward Avenue. Now, if you watch Star Trek, you've been watching for a long time, you know Trek, you know exactly what that means. You know, you know what that means. And I got a big kick out of that. So I was like, so that's how the name for 10 Forward came about. Now, 10 Forward is kind of like the bar, lounge, on the, on the uh, Enterprise and the Star Trek The Next Generation. It's where Whoopi Goldberg's character, Guinan, serves drinks. She's the bartender, the barkeep. But she got the name from Earth back in the day, back in 2024, on Forward Avenue in the Building 10. And that's where 10 Forward comes from. Sit the hall, please. <laughs> so Picard goes in there, talks to Guinan, get convinces Guinan, take me to the Watcher. I need, I need to talk to Watch. They have some discussions. She didn't want to go up first, but eventually she's like, yeah, I'll take it. And that's basically what happened to them. So there's more going on, of course, that, that missed out. But I could go on here for a long time because I'm already going on quite a bit of minutes here. But the main thing I kind of want to get into about it is that it's always interesting to see characters that come from another place in time or another society and how they view our current society. Because they have, they have like an outsider's perspective on that society. And to see the way they look at it and view it coming from the outside. And that's always a kick to see on TV. And what's even more interesting how I can relate it to myself. Is that being in this pandemic and spending a lot of time in solitude. And doing lots of meditation and self-discovery. Just being with itself more. When I walk out in today's society. And go out there. Go out there. And I view it. And I see what's happening. I view these different things. I view them with a, almost with an outsider's view. A little bit. The kind of like the guys in the, in, the, in the show. Kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Things that I have saw in a certain light for so long. I now am seeing in a different way. And I think it is due to the pandemic. And due to the uh, amount of solitude that we've experienced in the pandemic. You guys out there might know what I'm talking about. Maybe you spent so much time with yourself. In solitude. And maybe, you, maybe you're like me and you unplugged a lot. Maybe you didn't you consume lots of media. You just kind of unplugged and sat with self. Self-discovery, self-care, meditations. Just kind of explored your mind, right? And maybe after doing that, when you walk out in society, you go places, you go things, look at things, look, you, you, see, you see TV, you see things. You just see them in a little different perspective than before you went into the pandemic, right? Maybe a little bit, maybe a lot of it. But I imagine that a lot of people in this pandemic are now kind of viewing society in the way that Seven, Rafi, Chris Rails are kind of viewing 2024. Coming from a different place and viewing them with a different perspective and eyes. Because I know I kind of am a little bit. And it's kind of weird. It's kind of tripped me out. Like, I've lived in the United States for 46 years. Born and raised in the culture. Been all over the place been deep in the pop culture, deep in all these things for many years, and just spending a little bit of time in solitude. A couple years, we're going on two years now, is it two years? I think it's two years now. 
solitude with self and just seeing it with a different lens. Very weird. I may be Picard, Chris Rios, Seven, and Rafi. I may be them. <laughs> so anyways, um, the show was fantastic. Still loving it. It just this episode's phenomenal. It's it's the second season is better than the first to me. But it, with most shows I watch, not just Star Trek, usually as the seasons progress, they get better. It's just the way it works for me. It's just how it works. So, anyways, that's all I want to talk about. Star Trek Picard. Watcher. Great episode. Star Trek is back, baby. And it's not over. There's more coming after Picard. Strange new world is coming up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Cartoons are coming back into the year. Ooh, ooh, yes. It's a good time to be a Trek fan. It is, it is, it is. Live long and prosper. Beat me up, Scotty. Oh, yeah. So there's more Trek news I can talk about. I'll say that for a later date. So um, that's it. This concludes the podcast. And until next time, we'll see. Every job is a self-portrait of the person who did it. Autograph your work with excellence. Ted Key. Until next time, it's the Captain Peace. The Captain, the Captain Talks, Talks Flicks. Flicks.